HDI, Human Development Index. What is it? What do we use it for? What's its purpose? Stick around and I'll help explain it to you. So the purpose of this Human Development Index is to compare developed countries or MDCs versus developing countries or LDCs. So exactly what is it? It's a scale trying to max out at 1 or 100 comparing the level of development. So countries in North America are at 0.92, whereas in Nigeria they're 0.52. Now nobody's a perfect 100% or a 1, but you're trying to get as close to that as possible. The United Nations came up with three factors to help determine this HDI. First of all, do you have a decent standard of living? Second of all, can you live a long and healthy life? And third of all is access to knowledge. So let's break down each one of these factors and explore them more. All right, so a decent standard of living is broken down into three subcategories to figure out do you have a decent standard of living. The first is income, the second is economic structure, and the third is productivity. So let's break each one of these factors down and take a look at them more in depth. So there are four parts of income that we look at when trying to determine the development of a country. The first is GDP. This is the most simple one. This is all the goods and services made in a country within its borders. So if you make a car in your borders, if you make a globe within your borders, anything that's made on your soil in a country counts as your GDP. Another factor that's looked at is GMP or gross national product. This is the GDP plus whatever a country makes on somebody else's soil. So in the case of the United States, we get to claim everything made on our soil with GMP, but we also get to claim what Nike makes in Vietnam. So anything value that Nike makes or another company makes in another country, we get to claim that as well. All right, we got two more to take a look at. We got GNI, which is gross national income. And this is like GMP or GDP plus all the money that's being paid through investment. So any money coming into the country with an investment and any money leaving the country with investments, that counts in GNI. A fourth one is PPP or purchasing power parity. It's a great tongue twister, but it also examines the amount of money needed in one country to purchase the same good or service in another country. So it's basically how much does a Big Mac cost in America and how much does it cost in Germany or France? And you compare how much it costs more in one country or the other. The same with like Nikes. How much does a Nike cost in America? How much does it cost in another country? And you compare it and then that way you can also examine a country's economy. Now, in talking about a decent standard of living, we have to look at economic structure, and there's three different types of economic structure we're going to focus in on. The first is primary. This is when you extract things from the earth. So this is miners and farmers. It's any time your hands are dealing with the earth. The next one is secondary. This is processing. So this is basically when you're canning a product that was farmed, or this is where you're processing the iron ore into steel. The third major economic structure we're going to look at is tertiary, and this is when we talk about services. This is selling the products that were created. So this is a car salesman. This is a clerk at a supermarket. It's anybody that's providing a service to other people. The last part of a decent standard of living we're going to look at is productivity. See, workers in developed nations have robots and machines that help them make goods. So they can make a lot more at a cheaper price than, say, a country in sub-Saharan Africa where they do a lot more by hand. That leads us to the last part of productivity, and that's value added. Value added means the value of a product minus the raw materials and energy. So when we look at how much it costs to produce something per hour in America, it's usually $67. Whereas in Mexico, it's $16. So that's why a lot of goods are made in Mexico or China versus building them in the United States. It's a company's way of making something cheaper. So the second item we're going to look at is access to knowledge. And when we look at development, it's much more than just wealth. It's about education. It's so very important. 
The UN looks at a lot of data. One of the first things they look at is they take 25 year olds and older and they look at how many years of schooling did they have. So when we look at developed countries like Germany, Canada, and United States, it's about 11 and a half years per person. But when we go to Sub-Saharan Africa, it's only about 4.7 years of schooling that you have. And again, knowledge is very important. Having an education is very important in development. A second thing that's looked at is the expectation of how many years of schooling. In developed countries, you're expected to go on average 16.3 years, where in developing countries, uh, it's much lower. In places like South Asia, it's about 10.2 years of schooling. In places in Sub-Saharan Africa, you're only expected to go to school for 9.3. So again, many more years are expected in developed countries. A third item that the United Nations looks at is student per teacher ratio. So they take how many students you have enrolled in a school and divide it by how many teachers. Wealthier countries tend to have a smaller classroom setting, although I know a lot of students and teachers in America would totally argue that that is not necessarily always true. A fourth thing that the United Nations looks at is literacy rate. Literacy rate in developed countries is near 100%, usually over 99%. Developing countries already have a problem with literacy. And then what we see as another problem is a lot of their technical manuals are written in English or a foreign language. So not only do they have a lower literacy rate, but manuals that they need to run machinery or to run computer systems are written in another language. And that holds back development. part of HDI we're going to look at is health and wealth. When we're talking about health, the first thing we want to look at is life expectancy. Around the world, it's about 71 years of age. In developed countries, it's 80 years of age. But in Sub-Saharan Africa, it falls all the way down to 57 years old. Much of this reason is because in developed countries, we have a lot more access to medicines and better access to doctors. Infants live 99.5% of the time in developed countries, whereas in developing countries they only live 94% of the time. And much of that is due to because of mal malnutrition, dehydration, illness, and diarrhea. So the second part of health and wealth is the wealth part. Let's look at consumer goods, especially in transportation and communication. When we look at transportation, we want to talk about cars. Cars really help determine the wealth of a country. They're expensive, first of all, but they also allow us to move around and be able to buy goods and services or to get us to a concert of a really lame boy band. Phones are very important, especially when we talk about cell phones and smartphones. They help determine the wealth of a country. They also allow us to communicate much more effectively, which boosts our economy. Or they allow us to get onto Snapchat or uh, Twitter and see what kind of crazy things our friends are doing in class. Another factor is computers. Computers are expensive, but they also help with business. The more computers, the better off your economy is. It also allows us to get on the internet and look at funny cat videos. So the gap between the rich countries and the poor countries is widening, and it's getting worse and worse. Poor countries not only are struggling just to try to find food and to boost their economy, they can't afford these goods, while rich countries can, and that just continues with their development. So there you have it. In conclusion, we have looked at three factors that have to do with HDI and the development of countries.